We're also hitting a very interesting level of VWAP support, a confluence of support surrounding our bounce just above that 50 period moving average. Look at this. This is absolutely amazing. This is the S&P daily chart. Look at our highs over here. Our little miniature double top that we formed. This was right after the Fed. S&P went three points above that level. NASDAQ and Dow peaked over here the day after the Fed meeting. But the VWAP from those two levels is right here. And we were just above that level, okay? That's the purple and the red line right there. If you look down at these lows, the low here from April 19th and the higher low that set up, that's the black and the blue line right here. The black line is from the low. The blue line right here that we tagged it and just overthrew it, that's from the higher low. And this low right here from the Fed, we close back above it and that is this little orange line right here. So you have this confluence of support, of VWAP support, and we bounced off of that there on Friday. VIX was predicting a rally, an up day, even though we sold off new recent lows at the, intra, at the intraday uh, lows of the session, we still managed to close positive. VIX correctly predicted that and we bounced off the VWAP support. So will this VWAP support hold even if we go a little bit lower? There is a confluence of support here. The blue and the black line, the black line from the low here, the blue line from the higher low that's set up. Again, uh, we're bouncing off of those levels right now. The black line is the VWAP from these two peaks over here. So a uh, very interesting. If this level can hold, I think you're going to go up and try to make new highs and hit the upper channel line. We'll see what happens. We're going to go lower. We've got to start taking these levels out. Previously, we bounced off the VWAP support levels from this consolidation and this consolidation, those lows there, and that is the red line here and the little black line right here. We bounced off of those levels. They acted as support. The, v, the v, VWAP from the October low is this line right here, but pretty interesting confluence of support there uh, with the highs over here and the lows over here that we bounced right there, a confluence of support for VWAP. We'll be watching as we go into next week. Does this confluence of support hold? The bottoming tail hold. My trending signals try to turn bearish, but couldn't do it. A couple of them have turned bearish. The majority of them are still bullish. Momentum is bearish. Most of the trending signals are still bullish here. So far, the signal is remaining bullish told you back up at the top that we were getting signs of distribution and then we got the bearish engulfing candlestick and we got more signs of distribution so far with the critical mass cloud we've not triggered a uh, a sell signal yet and we're finding support at the critical mass line we tried to take it out uh, but then we rebounded and again got a bottoming tail bouncing off the 50 in the daily time frame Again, I think there's still a good shot that we attempt to go and make a new high. We'll hit that upper channel line. I still think that's a strong possibility. A lot of signals were prevented from turning bearish Friday with the bottoming tail and the rebound that we got. The VIX predicted that would happen. Predicted 85% chance because of the 10% move higher on Wednesday, the VIX was predicting that we would get a bounce within two sessions. There was an 85% chance that that would happen, and the VIX got that correct. Distribution here warned of a sell-off. It was correct, and we sold off. Now we're seeing uh, by the dip here, and we're seeing a little bit of accumulation. doesn't always play out. We, tr we saw a little bit of it right here, but it failed, and we ended up getting a bigger sell-off. Again, other times it's marked uh, short-term tops and bottoms here. Uh, we saw a short-term bottom here, short-term uh, top as we were in a downtrend uh, here in the sideways move. We got um, a little bit of accumulation. It eventually led to a breakout of the sideways consolidation. So again, uh, if we can recover, again, I still think we're going to go up and try to hit that upper boundary uh, moving into the Fed meeting. I think that's likely and I think we'll see a divergence begin to develop as we move towards uh, the June 12th meeting. We'll get the CPI that very same day. So it happens. If signals start turning bearish with the swing trend signals, then can go lower. But right now, uh, we're seeing a couple of them turn. Momentum's remained negative. But again, a rebound there on Friday with a bullish bottoming tail. 
Hope you're watching to see if we test the low or not. Does it hold if we do test it? And I'll be watching to see if we attempt a recovery and a rebound. If we do, then I'll be watching to see if we can make new highs into the trend line and going into these uh, levels here. And if we exclude the shadow, uh, again, it's pointing up towards just underneath uh, the trend line. About that in great length of detail in my last video. The land of critical mass. But in my last update, again, if we can attempt to rebound some of the support we're hitting, we still may go up to this upper boundary of the channel before all is said and done. And again, uh, with these lows maybe pointing up to possibly where the next high will be or including the shadow uh, here just uh, underneath that level. But again, I'll be watching this upper boundary should we attempt a recovery. I think we're going to likely see a recovery on the Dow, although it may still form a diversion. So I'll talk about that later. A lot of time talking about the S&P and the NASDAQ in my last update. Dow is really leading the charge down. So I want to show you some important things about the Dow later in the video. Things I'll be watching for next week. Please support the channel with the link directly below. That allows me to be able to provide you this information. If you like the charts, like the indicators, let me know that by supporting the channel consider partnering with me. I don't have any sponsors. Turn all that stuff down because I don't want to sell you a bunch of stuff. You could take a moment to support the, the uh, channel today. I would really, really appreciate that. If you like this information, you want this information, please consider partnering with me and helping out today. I thank you for that. I've talked about this briefly. Again, we've gotten a bearish reversal of conditions as far as momentum is concerned. The trend signals are still bullish. We're trying to bounce off the 50. Again, we start getting some green next week at some point. You could still form a diversion in the most recent price action here on the Awesome Oscillator, on the MACD, on the RSI in the daily time frame. You could still be under construction with the RSI diversions on the Awesome Oscillator and the RSI in the weekly time frame. It's possible it's done with their bearish engulfing. But again, we need to see more signals turn bearish and stop making new highs. Here we've come down to the 50. We're getting a bounce what happens if we can get above the 10 period moving average flip the cloud next week here with the momentum cloud clear the red dots of resistance you know get above this 5300 area here we are just below it at 5277 you start clearing the low 5300 area this area right here right around 5312 you start clearing that level getting above the 10 period moving average at 50 uh, 5290 is where the 10 period moving average is at you start clearing that level, got a shot at going to new highs. We do have a gap fill here that we'll be watching the gap fill area here to see what becomes of that. So again, that's the gap fill right there at the upper boundary of the cloud here and a red dots of resistance. Might test this area some more. Again, we might even take it out and hit the 50 period, but we'll be watching to see Can momentum flip back to bullish week or do we begin to see trend signals all begin to turn bearish this is the S&P daily chart same is true for the Nasdaq and I touched on this briefly last update but wanted to continue to point out the bounce off the 50 period moving averages the bottoming tails and can that flip momentum back to bullish eventually can we get back above those 10 period moving averages in the daily time frame we had the inflation data come in and it came in right in line pretty much with expectations. I told you it was going to come in on the softer side. We initially saw the market rally with futures, then it sold off, but then we had that late day recovery creating a bottoming till at the 50 period moving average. The S&P 500, again, we've got the same type of recovery on the NASDAQ. I touched on that in the daily time frame. Uh, in my last update, so go watch that. I'll link it at the end of this video. The month over month number came in right in line here with the headline number, three tenths of a percent. The core, I told you, was going to come in. It was going to be the best reading that we've had. PCE inflation data all year, it came in at two tenths of a percent, came in right in line with the expectations uh, there with the core month over month. The headline year over year also came in line and was equal to our previous reading at 2.7 came in right in line at 2.7 right on the nose the core year over year also came in line with expectations it's expected to be 2.8 came in at 2.8 
and that was our previous reading as well. So uh, we had futures rally with that, then it sold off, back and tested the 50 period moving average on the S&P. We had the sell off with NASDAQ, and then the late day recovery by the dippers came in, key support levels that I'll be talking about in this video. We could see positive PCE data and we could try to rally into the Fed meeting, which I still think is likely going to be the case. The Fed meetings have been calling the turns as I've been showing you over and over again. Next week, we will get manufacturing on a Monday, get private payrolls or we'll get factory orders on Tuesday. We'll get private payrolls on Wednesday. Then on Friday, we'll get the jobs report. Employment rate is expected to hold steady at 3.9%. The estimate of uh, jobs is uh, supposed to be at 178,000. Week after that, one uh, uh, a week and a half from right now, we're going to get the CPI data and we're going to have the Fed meeting. They have it marked here wrong. It is uh, marked as the uh, of the uh, minutes from the Fed. It is not. It is going to be the Fed meeting the very same day on June 12th, which you can see right here on their website on June 12th. And we're going to get the uh, economic projections. And again, this meeting is going to be important because, again, the estimate for the amount of cuts for 2024. And again, the market was very optimistic at the beginning of the year and and you know seven cuts five to six to seven then it went all the way back to no cuts for the year between one and two right now but it went all the way back to none none and one for a little while so we'll be watching but again this very well could be a market mover of uh, the uh the economic projections be getting with that where the Fed sees rates and how many cuts they are anticipating for 2024 and 2025. Rally into that, it's very possible, complete the diversions and uh, hit that upper channel line on the weekly chart and complete the diversion, maybe on the daily chart and the weekly chart if they aren't already completed right here and now. So again, got a really good shot that we can rally into uh, the Fed meeting. But I do think we're getting something like this that is forming right here like our 2022 top whether it's done or not have to see if we start seeing signals turn back to bearish trending signals most of them remain bullish while momentum is bearish now i warned you a few days ago that the momentum had started to turn bearish momentum line had started to turn bearish we began to see some momentum signals begin to turn now here trend is still bullish we tried to breach the cloud Friday couldn't do it, got a bottoming tail. We are seeing some weakness with momentum right here. We can firm up or test the low and, and, and have it hold. Uh, we could get something like this where this goes negative and then it turns back in a positive territory. That really ended up giving us this little diversions uh, back up at the March high. I should say at the April 1st high because uh, NASDAQ and, and the Dow peaked on, on in March there, but uh, P three points higher there on a March, sorry, on April 1st, April Fool's Day, it went up one, uh, three points higher. I'll be watching to see if trend signals begin to turn back to bearish or if they can hold, can we recover and go up to this trend line, which is what I think is likely going to be the case. And like I said, we may even overthrow it. It may change slightly the angle of ascent, but I think that you got a pretty good shot that we're going to rally up into this area. If these levels hold here with the cloud, here with the trend and the 100 period moving average, then again, we could still try to go higher. We start taking this level out. Uh, then again, you have your 100 period down here. You have possibility again of forming the larger head and shoulders right here, right now with the peak being with the bearish engulfing. But we have seen uh, the bars flip to red uh, showing shift in momentum short-term momentum as they did over here they flip back to green at some point next week then again it's going to show a sideways kind of a move here they remain red we'll need to see trend signals begin to turn bearish they're taking out this low here and holding below it we got confirmation to the bearish engulfing but no follow-through we did not get the follow-through we didn't close below this low right here we got a bottoming tail Momentum is still bearish. We'll see if that changes next week or if it is more signals, trending signals, to turn bearish. We're going to get a bigger drop. 
the momentum will need to be uh, the momentum line will need to be uh, red remaining red will need to drop here remain in the negative region if we see momentum line turn back to to uh, blue back to bullish we get above it then again we can get a rally and if we start seeing a blue arrow canceling out the the orange arrow which is warning of a possible reversal We're seeing things go back and forth like we did over here from bullish to bearish back to bullish back and forth then you can have a kind of a sideways move now here there was a warning of a possible top at this peak right here there was a warning of a possible bottom right here about both of those times we began to see the momentum line flip here to red and flip here back to blue uh, here we saw it flip and there was no warning sign so we could still make a new high still get a top without a warning sign the signals are perfect but they warn when a turn could possibly happen times false signals appear but there was no warning here so again I think it's still possible that we go up and hit this trend line or even overthrow it a bit and go into the Fed meeting over the next week and a half now take a look at the sell-off had on Friday took us down the S&P went down to that 50-day moving average and we bounced we ended up with a bottoming tail I showed this in my last video and again uh, the cloud remained green here if it flips to red we get a bigger dump and the oscillator goes negative okay but if we can rebound here right at this level of support then I think we could still climb and move towards upper channel line as I've been talking about and end up seeing a divergence develop here going upper boundary of the channel in the weekly time frame when the cloud turns red bad things start happening on the S&P when it's green good things are happening on the S&P 500 it was prevented from turning green or from turning red there on Friday as the VIX predicted that we would get a rebound closing positive on Friday the VIX was correct in its Wednesday prediction of a bounce or a bottom even if we pull back I'll be watching to see if this level can hold so that we hit uh, there on Friday if we pull back or do we just uh, slightly violate Friday's low and then rebound watching to see if we get traction here the cloud remains green we've had the pullback the, the cloud remains green you see momentum turn bearish it is still bearish it has to turn back to bullish if we're going to go higher if we're going to go higher this is a trend line that I'm going to be watching right here to see if we go up and slam up into it or even overthrow it and hit that level again we have a divergence on the RSI in the weekly time frame and on the awesome oscillator in the weekly time frame I've talked about both in my last update may not be done yet if we can rebound back up and it may be uh, again that we still have not completed the head formation of a possible uh, head and shoulders top now here again the turns have marked swing moves up swing moves down and sideways moves sideways moves as well and again if we begin to recover I'll be watching to see momentum signals start turning back to bullish if they don't and we start seeing swing trend signals begin to turn that may be all she wrote but it is a very good chance we still attempt to hit that upper boundary before all is said and done again as I've said it may be close but no cigar there's no guarantee we do majority of the trending signals still hanging in there on the bullish side so again this just may be a pullback and then we get one more thrust higher so if we can see a turnaround I'll be watching to see if we can come up to this trend line still or not on the S&P 500 and that is the weekly upper channel line that I've been talking about in the daily and the weekly time frame if momentum can flip back to bullish some trending signals have turned bearish but most of them are are still bullish but momentum can turn back up we start seeing green bars representing momentum again we start seeing momentum signals turn back up I would suggest a sideways a smaller pullback but kind of a sideways kind of a move kind of like what we had over here where we pull back but then we uh, the advance off of the lows breaking VWAP support and the 50 period moving average get a bigger dump so I'll be watching signals to see if they start turning back to bullish 
with reference to momentum, the more trending signals begin to turn bearish, like what we had right here. Start seeing green bars again. If we start seeing momentum signals begin to turn back to bullish, seeing bearish signals, then again, then the diversions on the RSI might not be done that I talked about in my last update. The trending signals, we came right to support and we bounced. So again, we'll see if these levels hold as support near the VWAP support levels, near the 50-day moving average. The momentum just turned bearish to pull back and it's still going to try to go higher. We'll be watching what happens as we move towards the Fed meeting now over the next week and a half. Now here I have momentum and the trend together. This is momentum, which is showing flatlined where we need to drop below it and it needs to start dropping if we're going to get a change in the trend. But we came down, tried to change it here, but we couldn't close below it and we rebounded. Bullish signal remains. Momentum did not go negative either, at least so far. So again, I'll be watching this area. And if we do climb back up, again, our trend line comes into play up here. We can climb higher or come back, flirt with this level, and then come higher. If it can hold, we slightly violate it, and then we rebound. Watching, does momentum start turning back up here on the S&P daily? And again, trending signals still hanging in there. Try to take out the support level so far. We weren't able to do it there on Friday with the Friday low. Now this line represents the trend. It is still green. We hit it, we violated it, but we bounced and we're back. We closed back above it. It's still green. There's been no sell signal triggered like over here or back over here, at least so far. So again, and momentum is still positive. Again, I think you could still form a divergence. A lot of my signals still bullish hitting support levels. We'll be watching to see what becomes of this bottoming tail. Critical mass cloud 2.0 still bullish. We've gotten red bars showing momentum is weakening, but uh, and, and briefly took out uh, the critical mass line. Got back above it on Friday, and again, momentum still positive. So I'll be watching to see if we can recover or not. Showing you all these trending signals because they're still positive. Well, a couple have turned bearish. The majority of them are still bullish even though momentum has shifted a critical mass line still bullish it's, it's going flatlined here showing we're going sideways at the moment so again when you start dropping below it holding below it go lower over here we broke it we tried to get above it it failed and then we tried to get above it again and we got rejection at it it remained bearish and we we continued down we saw more and more signals turn bearish here we dodged the bullet on a lot of the trending signals that are still bullish while momentum is bearish. We'll see if we attempt a recovery with the bottoming tail or not, or do we take it out, or we'll see if we test it at some point next week. Like I keep saying, again, I think there's still a possibility we go up and hit that upper channel line in the weekly time frame. Now, if we start seeing all these signals begin to turn bearish, momentum remain bearish, then you got a possible hanging man. If we close below this week's low, then you got a doji fall by a possible hanging man. But it could be a bottoming tail, as I've talked about. It can still carry us up to this upper boundary or even overthrow it if we redefined the upper boundary. Again, the question now becomes, is the diversions, as I talked about this in great length of detail in my last update, is the diversions done? Is it still under construction? If we peak with the bearish engulfing here in the daily time frame, and we're now starting the right side of a head formation, or is it not yet done? And we bounced here off the 50. Again, VWAP support was here. The 50 period was here. Some of these other levels with our trending signals were here. Again, can we recover and still go higher? Or is it we dance around a little bit or even test the 50 and tag it and, and still attempt a recovery? If we start breaking down further, we just continue up and fill the gap and and, and that's it. You know, we just we just uh, up another lower high here at a lower high. If we exceed this peak a little bit, that's going to be problematic for going higher. But again, I think you still got a good shot of it. I'm watching to see which way it plays out. But uh, clearly we have buyers coming in, surrounding our 50 period moving average, uh, getting the bottoming till. Six was right. It predicted an update. It looked like it happened for much of the session. And then we had that late day recovery. Talked about my last update, we could still form these divergences in the most recent price action on the MACD and on the RSI up here.
$64,000 question is, is the diversions on the RSI in the weekly time frame and on the awesome oscillator in the weekly time frame, are those diversions as done? Looking for clues next week. And if we begin to see momentum turn back to bullish, then it's not done. We see trading signals all begin to turn bearish, then quickly done. Again, the bottoms and the tops and the continuation patterns have been surrounding the Fed. This was the Fed meeting. This was the Fed meeting. Again, tops and bottoms could see another one built surrounding this meeting. Should we attempt to rally, it could mark a top as it did back over here at the, well, really the April 1st high, uh, S&P moved a little higher, but again, the Dow and the NASDAQ peaked the very day after the Fed meeting, we got a post-Fed sell-off. Dow rose by 575 points today. I told you it had become very, very oversold. It rose by 1.5% today. I've talked about this channel. We broke out of the channel. I told you with the bottoming tail we had on Thursday, again, that we could either go a little bit lower and form a divergence right here, or we can get a higher low and then get a breakout. Well, we started to uh, rally. It fizzled out. We got a little topping tail. We started to sell off, but we couldn't go and take out that low from Thursday. It was the higher low here on the 60-minute chart. So we saw the breakout of the trend line. Uh, after filling this gap right here, we broke this downward uh, channel. Again, directly overhead, we have the 50 period that's now crossing the 200. Problematic for the Dow. But I still think that we're going to eventually try to rebound up. Uh, again, the S&P got a big rally too far away from the, uh, the highs. Uh, the Dow, it came back and filled the gap down over here from May 3rd. Okay, the S&P uh, didn't get that big of a sell-off. So again, if the Dow can recover or if the Dow goes lower, listen carefully, if the Dow goes lower and forms a divergence right here on the RSI like that, and we get something like that and we go a little bit lower. Again, there's key support down here at the April lows still might form a divergence. And if so, then you've got a possible one, two, this whole thing being three, maybe four and five on the Dow and then it gets a recovery. So I'll be watching, does the Dow make a new low or not? Does the S&P? Dow's taking a much bigger hit than the S&P 500. So we'll be watching to see. Go back next week and test the lows from this week. So do we take it out? Do we take it out on the Dow but not the S&P? Or do we? Both of those lows hold from this week. Again, we don't have to form a divergence on the RSI. We've had bullish divergences in other places. You don't have to do it, but you can. He had negative divergences. This one over here just gave us a pullback. This one over here gave us a reversal. There is no divergence present on the RSI, but there is divergences present on other indicators. CD got a bullish cross, but it's still in the negative territory. So again, we might end up forming a divergence there before all is said and done. If our lows can hold and we can build upon this, I'll be watching to see if we can get back above the 50 and the 200. Or do we, you know, have further consolidation? This is telling us, hey, they're going to start going down here more or you're in a sideways kind of a, a move. If we can eventually get back above the moving averages. I told you on Thursday ahead of the PCE data that we had formed multiple point divergences on the Dow in the 60 minute time frame here. Even though we didn't have it on the RSI, uh, we had it with uh, momentum here. We had it on other indicators played out. So again, I will be watching to see keep going and get above the moving averages and you know off to the races and try to fill the gap here we go higher fill the gap and pull back or uh again do we retreat immediately if we sell off early on next week i'll be watching the rsi on the dow if it forms a divergence or not it doesn't have to it is possible it was a dow that led the charge lower the last uh, peak that we had and again just shy of 40,000. I told you to be watching all these gaps. We came down at the April lows. I told you the S&P hit the 20 week moving average. I was going to come back and fill some of these gaps or all of them. Fill some of them. Then maybe the S&P just hits 5,200, gets a lower high. If it tries to fill all of them, possible the Dow reaches 40,000 and the S&P moves to a new all time high. We filled all those gaps. Now the Dow's leading the charge lower, just as it did back over here. Now here, 
After the sell-off, we were eventually able to get back above the 50-period moving average with this breakout. We did get above it. Uh, here with this breakout, we did not. So again, more work to be done with either diversions or a test of the lows because we're still below the 50-period moving average. Uh, when we broke out the last time around, we had gotten above it, had some choppiness surrounding it, but eventually, again, went back and filled those gaps that I had talked about. When we got the bottom over here in April, again, the 50 had already crossed the 200, and we were recovering, getting our recovery phase back above that 50 period moving average and eventually consolidated and got back above the 200 to get the rising wedge after we broke out of the channel. So here we've got this channel. Uh, we're breaking out of it. You've got the 50 and the 200 directly overhead as resistance and this gap fill right at that area as well. Powerful rally up 575 points. I told you the Dow would become very, very oversold. And then we'll be watching again. We have a possible double top for the Dow if this level breaks here. But again, uh, it might be further consolidation around here like we did over here and eventually get a bigger rally. And that could take the S&P to a new high. These levels might be tested. That's why I'm saying the Dow still might go. If this is a way forward, the Dow still might go a little bit lower. Uh, but still, uh, you know, hold above the confirmation line here uh, before uh, bigger move higher. So is this a way four? You know, we have a one, two, three, four, and then we get a five. Uh, or is the move done? Low can hold and maybe we get some consolidation here. But we did get some choppiness around here. We'll be watching that. But again, eventually, Dow can't make new highs. Then you have the possibility of a double top. S&P is forming a head and shoulders. So is the NASDAQ. Here's the Dow in the daily time frame. Again, had the peak over here. Now we have a peak over here. So you've got the possibility of a double top. S&P went a little bit higher than this level. The Dow went slightly higher. But here, here you can see in the daily time frame. Again, look at the, the, you know, the break of the, the channel that we saw a moment ago on 60 minute chart. You had this choppiness. You had the back-to-back -back bullish candlesticks, the inverted hammer with the Fed day, but fall by the hammer before we got the, the, the rebound back up. Could be more work to be done in here uh, surrounding this level. But again, you do have the possibility of a double top pattern uh, on the Dow. And again, if the Dow cannot make new highs, say we get more choppiness going down here and then bottom out, rebound, or if this low can hold, again, the the Dow did not move to new lows. The S&P and NASDAQ moved down. Rebound, it got bottoming tails. The Dow did not, but Dow did not move to a new low. We got that bottoming tail there on Thursday. We might form the diversions. We might not, but the Dow got the big rebound. So we'll be watching. The Dow is still below the 50, though. Uh, is there more work to be done here? And then we go higher, and then we'll see uh, about a Fibonacci retracement. But it could be, again, if the Dow does form a divergence on the RSI, there might be more work to be done. And we get something like this. And then the S&P goes up and ends up making a new high going into the Fed meeting or just after the Fed meeting or whatever. Possible double top on the Dow if it stops making new highs. For the week, the Dow was down 383 points. The Dow was down about 1%, just under 1%. Again, in the weekly time frame, we closed strong. We had dropped below the 20-week moving average. Uh, at the lows of the week, again, we're down around 2.5%. We only ended down 1% on the weekly chart. We had a 2.5% drop the week before. We've turned off this trend line. I'll be watching to see if we stop making new highs on the Dow. Is the diversion done on the Dow? But the major resistance in the monthly time frame, term resistance and the trend lines, Dow in the monthly chart, it goes back 125 years and we're at that level right here, right now. Again, we, that doesn't mean we can't still hit this level. But again, you've got major long term resistance here. People, uh, most people don't even know it exists. Most people don't look at monthly chart I've shown it to you again, possible double top or we still reach that uh, if we still move to new high and go above 40,000. This trend line is likely going to halt the advance right now. This trend line has halted the advance at least for now. But you got a bottoming tail here in the weekly time frame, just like on the S&P 500. So again, we'll see if we can rebound back up. And if so, do we move to a new high or not?